Welcome today we're going to talk about the use of the iPad because while I was once a big iPad user uh, I actually spent the last what 20, 2022 2023 not using my iPad that much despite having an entire desk beside me set up for it. So let's talk about that. Before we do a few ways to support the channel number one become a member curtismchale.ca slash membership number two take a course curtismchale.ca slash education. For much of 2022 and 2023 the big thing that I used my iPad for was actually uh watching YouTube videos while I'm doing laundry or doing dishes and for running Zwift on my bike because it hooks up to my trainer and everything and like, you know, varies the power as a computer would. And it's the easiest one to take over there and just use. But kind of the end of 2023 and into early 2024 as we're talking now, I've made a big move back towards my iPad. The biggest issues that I had previously where stage manager was only okay. Uh, I hated the audio setup where you had to send audio to your iPad only. It was really hard to send it off to something else. I had to use a special shortcut to make it work actually, but that now is fine. I can send the audio to anything to my iPad, to my stone speakers behind me, to anything really easily. And then the other thing was the lagginess of Obsidian on iPad. And I did a video about that a while ago and how I resolved it and ultimately it came down to there's some plugins that are slow. I have also found if I have too many tabs open on Obsidian, that, that has been an issue, so then I can't research and write, which is what I use Obsidian for. So as I've come back to my iPad for 2024 and 2023 and 2024 as definitely my weekend uh, computer, I don't really sit at this station. Um, anytime I'm writing, reading, researching, that's what I use it for. Um, when I'm programming, which is where I sit at my Mac studio here with my multiple monitors, I don't use it for that. But let's look at the setup I use. Um, the first thing that I use is the Visa stand that I made years ago. I've done a video about that. That'll be linked uh, below as well. And that Visa stand is still working excellent. I love it. It puts the iPad off on my left, which is good for me as a left-handed person. I can bring the iPad forward if I want to, and I can then draw on it with the pencil for stuff like designing thumbnails for YouTube. Now, the other thing I'm trying right now is from Lab22, their stand that's right in front of uh, my uh, monitor so I can have the iPad below. Uh, so far, it's been about a week. It's okay. I actually find the biggest difficulty is getting it off and on the stand, but we'll come back to that uh, as I do another iPad setup video at some point in the future when I've refined it. The monitor I use is the same one I've used for years. I have actually have two of them in front of me on the sides of my big monitor. Uh, it's an LG UL27500. I've viewed it in the past. It's great and there's not much to say about it they still work they are 4k uh they're not like the fanciest fancy monitors out there but they work and they're inexpensive so that's great uh, as i was writing this i was working on the 8-bit do retro keyboard review uh, and while that keyboard was cool it looks nice uh it's not the one for me as i said in the review so you can check that out uh, right now i have actually on there my um moonlander because right in front of me i have a uh, glove 80 keyboard that i'm testing out as kind of a main uh working keyboard here so that's one of the problems that i possibly solved already by putting a fully split ergonomic keyboard in front of my ipad the trackpad i still use the apple magic trackpad there's just nothing else that beats it it is the best pointing device for your ipad so if you're trying something else get a trackpad it is the best by far to connect my device, my iPad to the monitor, to everything else, uh, it's right to internet because it says wired internet. I use the Cal Digit Element Hub and I use USB-C uh, adapter, USB-C to Ethernet adapter on that as well. It is still, like it has been for years, attached to the back of the Visa stand. Uh, I use you know, some Velcro and some other stuff to keep it back there. Uh, and then I use some Velcro to keep all the cables managed as it goes down through the uh, arm that I have, which is a cheap Amazon arm that holds the iPad. Now things to improve. I already talked a little bit about this, the keyboard, I need an ergonomic keyboard. So I've got the Moonlander there right now as I work on the Glove 80. Now the Glove 80 is gonna take some more programming though. So it does uh, home row mods where I can touch and have you, cause I'm Dvorak, or hold and have command, but it actually prefers the hold option. And so that actually has made some mistypes for me. So I need to go into the programming and do tap preferred, but we're not there yet. The other keyboard I'm interested in is the Voyager from ZSA. I've actually started at least with the Glove 80 to take keys off when I don't use them. Uh, and I have a, quite a few keys missing from my keyboard. So I wonder if the Voyager from ZSA, uh, which is a, like the little little cousin of the Moonlander, will actually be a better keyboard for me because it has less, less keys on it. It doesn't have the tenting options, but you can 3D print them or you can make stuff with the rare earth magnets uh, to attach it to the keyboard. Outside of that, I really don't have a lot of complaints. Like I said, I'm trying the uh, Lab 22 stand. Uh, and the other thing I just bought actually recently was the Bridge Max Plus keyboard, which sounds kind of funny since the uh, iPad is coming out. Theoretically, new iPads are coming out fairly shortly. But I really wanted to see, as people are talking about um, a laptop-style keyboard, 
as opposed to the floating standard keyboard that we have right now with the iPad. I want to see what a laptop style keyboard really did for me. Do I like that? Do I like how that works? Uh, and the Bridge Max Plus is the best one. So far, it's pretty okay. Um, I like it. I've had it on my lap, definitely better on the lap still with the iPad being heavy. It does weight it backwards, but it sits much better on your lap than the standard Apple, whatever magic, fancy, expensive keyboard. And the big problem with the fancy magic keyboards from Apple is they're that rubbery texture and both of mine are starting to get destroyed. I hope Apple invests in a better premium material. I'd rather see an all aluminum keyboard. I'd actually take just a little bit more weight even to have an aluminum keyboard, uh, something like the bridge ones, so that the materials just can't break down. Now for 2024, I'll also likely replace my iPad. Um, I'll likely replace, because I have an M1 iPad Pro 1 terabyte, I'll likely replace it with whatever comes out, 12.9 probably is again. I'll also likely buy an 11 inch. So I'll buy both of them because number one, my wife uses a 12.9 inch for a lot of her stuff and she finds it just a little big to carry with her when she travels. She goes away as a skating coach. So she'll be away for a weekend working with kids on the arena on the ice and she needs to have her iPad with her for work while she's there. So the 11 inch might be a better one. It'll fit in her bag better. So I'll buy both and I'll test them both out and see which one I like. I've wondered if the 11 inch is a better tablet than the 12.9 inch. And at least as of now, the 11 inch has the exact same capabilities with stage manager as the 12.9 does. So that means that I could have a better tablet and still have a lot of the power when I'm sitting at my desk that I would have. It doesn't have the, you know, the nicest, nicest screen, but we'll see what they do with the newest version. And I've also picked up an iPad mini recently as a note tool. So we'll talk about that in the future, but I could definitely see at least two iPads coming into my future and graduating a lot of these down to our other children that we have. Finally, what do I do with this iPad Pro? I mainly write and research on it. I answer some emails. Uh, I do some of my accounting on there, right? With numbers up there, entering stuff into spreadsheets um, and taking it, you know, converting from uh, US to Canadian with Solver uh, and running uh, with my email as well there. The other thing that I do is video editing sometimes. So I still dabble with a LumaFusion. Um, I've done DaVinci Resolve a little bit on my iPad as well. And I think this video will probably do on Final Cut. I don't love that Final Cut has a subscription, I would rather pay for it once and then just not have to pay for it again. Uh, I know that that, I guess at least with Final Cut, since they haven't updated it in so long to like a new paid version that I'm, you know, just making money because I'm not paying for it. And with this subscription, I will be. And now I don't have a lot of high video editing needs. Most of the time when I'm sitting in front of here, I'm actually using Ecamm Live or, or OBS Studio from recording on my Linux machine. And I'm doing a lot of my editing right in, um, the recording process, right? I'm switching over to the screen. I am having all the transitions done for me. So I'm just cutting out mistakes. So my editing is quite light, which means I've even used Kden Live on Linux and that's been entirely fine. After a few years, a number of years really, of the iPad feeling like it was really languishing. It really, it, it had potential, but it wasn't anywhere living up to it. I'm really excited about where the iPad's going this year. I'm really excited uh, about using it. I'm really enjoying using it again. Um, it has turned into a solid tool for me again. So it's worse than investing in. So I usually view these things in terms of, will I make a monetary return? All right. When I bought my framework, uh, 13 inch laptop, I looked at buying that, uh, you know, two grand laptop is, will I make return on it? And the fact is I had four weeks where I had to not work in my office most of the time because a new puppy, I just needed to help take care of it. There's a bunch of other stuff and I could earn out more than double the cost of that machine before I left with programming. Um, so that was great. I don't use it as much now, but I still do use it, you know, probably once a week it comes out and I do stuff with it. But that initial four weeks easily paid out the cost uh, in lost productivity. So that's how I even look at the iPad. Um, as I look at the new ones, as they come out, hopefully in March, I'll look at it and say, hey, will I make enough money on this? How much will I make? How much can I actually earn from this in improved productivity? Well, that's it. I'd love to know about your iPad setup. What do you like? What do you dislike about mine? Uh, you have any suggestions for things that I should look at in to improve my productivity on the iPad to improve the setup to make it more ergonomic? If you want to support the channel, uh, become a member of curtismichael.ca slash membership. Like, subscribe, all that other junk. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Have an awesome day.